Hello my dear Rex fans, I am AK Rex, and today I bring you something very interesting. Now, uh, this time around, as it has been long requested uh, by a lot of my subscribers, they wanted me to do a bit of a rant, and rant we shall. Now, the thing is, of course, um, this is one of those interesting topics, you know, one of those clickbaity videos and articles that we just love so much when they say 10 interesting facts about this, 7 things you did not know about that, I don't know, like 5 things you did not know about T-Rex, 3 things you should never say to a woman on a first date, I don't know, like you can, you can pretty much, like, I don't know, freaking 7 best sex positions in the world, but sorry I'm kind of taking it off the topic here, but do you understand what I'm saying, one of those kind of clickbaity, uh, you know, tricky things, titles? You know, in any case, this is going to be one of those. Uh, this is the 10 interesting facts, quote-unquote, about T-Rex. Some of them perhaps may be correct on certain aspects, but of course, as usual, given the length of the video and the depth at which it's ex been explored and uh, the level of knowledge of the subject that's been displayed, I can already tell you this is a goldmine for my channel. So let's get it on. Now, at about 0 0.18, there is a quote, obviously paraphrasing. Um, this is the one that says, Scientists now believe uh, it was feathered on some parts of its body. As in the T-Rex was feathered on some parts of its body. Uh, how many times have we talked about this by now? Should I just really record it, maybe, and just, I don't know, press replay every single time so I just avoid repeating it? I mean, come on, do I really have to go back to the Diwali uh, 2009 every single time and just remind people out there that it's not that simple? If you don't have the evidence, you cannot uh, claim anything. Believing does not make it so. I can believe anything I want. It doesn't mean that's the truth. It's not a fact. He says 10 facts. He was already starting from something that scientists believe. Okay, which scientists? Specifics. Citation. Pre Peer-reviewed primary source material supporting this at all? Otherwise, it's not a fact. It's bollocks. Next one. Now, um, at 0 0.47... First of all, I would like to correct saying that it's not Gigantosaurus, it's a Giganotosaurus, or Giganotosaurus, whichever way you prefer to pronounce it, but I say Giganotosaurus. Now, I think it's a bit more correct, actually, as I've been pointed out earlier on. I think Josh helped me, actually, with that one. Thank you, Josh. In any case, Giganotosaurus, well, define larger. Why are people never... Like, that's the problem with these videos, because they try to keep it short, they don't give proper explanations, specifics, definitions to... You know, they don't set the terms. They don't set the boundaries. That's the problem. It causes misconception. You cannot afford to make that mistake if you aim to educate and when you want to present something as a fact. And uh, this video, to my knowledge, has come out quite a number of years after, you know, the latest studies have been done by Scott Hardman that represents quite nicely uh, the restoration of Skeletal's comparison with the T-Rex and a Giganotosaurus. And we only have a holotype specimen of Giganotosaurus that is reliable. We don't have a large sample of it. So yes, there is a possibility it may have been larger, but we don't consider the possibility until we see the evidence. And the jaw fragment is just not gonna fly here. If that's the case, then we could just go for that USCMP example from a toe phalanx and think that maybe there is an even bigger T-Rex out there. But that's just like, it's dwelling into territory of speculation and it does not serve the purpose. The purpose is to present facts. He's trying to present facts in the video, whoever it is. Maybe it's not the narrator, maybe the narrator is just reading text, but whoever wrote the text for this video and later whatever version of it basically uh, aired in the end, it says clearly facts. There is no fact that confirms that Giganotosaurus is larger than T-Rex. It's at most similar size and it's actually fairly lighter built. It's longer, but it's fairly lighter built in terms of how 
uh, you know, the uh, body plan goes. And it's also lighter in mass than uh, pretty much almost any largest uh, adult T-Rex specimen, and there is quite a number. So uh, we have to kind of, if I were to go into specifics, uh, SU is heavier, and being an unusually heavy, even for a statistic average, uh, if you look at the screen right, right now with Hartman's drawing, it's pretty obvious that Giganotosaurus, at least based on this holotype specimen, is at most similarly sized, so in the same size league. And that's why uh, theropod sizes are just really tricky, because they have a different body plan. And uh, you, you kind of have to really accept that, that you can't really always make a statement saying this one was larger than this. Like, it's uh, you have to be extremely specific, and that's probably why I think I will do a proper theropod size video very soon. So stay tuned for that one, because I've, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've had so many things at hand, but I will do this one. So stick around. Now at 0 0.5, uh, as in that, like at 50 seconds of the video, it's already saying uh, Spinosaurus was heavier than T-Rex. Again, based on what evidence, what are you citing? It is generally accepted that it could have topped the length of any theropod presently known in fossil record from a good uh, material, but there isn't any reliable data to test the mass, as far as I'm aware of. I haven't really heard that many good sources to actually tell us any reliable information about Spinosaurus mass, and that makes it extremely tricky to understand where on the scale in terms of the uh, mass estimates does it fit next to other theropods. So, again, you know, uh, this is uh, still uh, an ongoing discussion which is just really, uh, like, you have to narrow it down a bit, you know, to point somewhere. Citation needed. Unless, uh, I mean, I may have to reread Ibrahim et al. again to see if it specifies anything, but last I recall I haven't heard anything cited in terms of any definitive, you know, uh, estimates on the mass, and uh, this is a bit of a trick one, so I don't know, I wouldn't, I would hold off co making any final comments on Spinosaurus, because it's just really ambiguous, even after Ibrahim et al. 14 got published, there's still quite a lot of craziness going on around that work as well, uh, in regards to Spinosaurus, and uh, we just need more fossils, so get more fossils, publish the work, test it, and then we'll talk. Next point. At 1 minute 25 seconds, there is, uh, again paraphrasing, there is no reason why Tyrannosaurus couldn't have indulged in both behaviors at the same time. Now, this one here, I can say for short, 100% correct and agreed. There is absolutely no reason to suggest that uh, T-Rex would not be able to uh, both hunt and scavenge. It's, it's a very easy one, to be honest. So, that's, yes, I could say that's a fact, because check, technically speaking, that's a true fact for pretty much any apex predator. So this one, as you can see, is a very short one and very straightforward. So at about 2.18, uh, he says uh, something about the infectious bite. Now, that, that's the point I'm a bit iffy about, given that there is no empirical evidence to support the claim, so technically should be dismissed outright. But uh, it's hard to deny as well the possibility, just given the fact that it may not have been specifically designed that way to be like infectious or, or poisonous or, or venomous, actually, or whatever. But um, it, it may have just been one of those things that sometimes, occasionally, if you have experienced a really bad wound from a predator, the prey that's trying to get away might just die because the wound may have festered as a result of a complication or other kind of processes that got involved into it. So, therefore, it's really hard to say whether it was something just limited to Tyrannosaurus or it could just be the case with any kind of situation, which is something that I'm more inclined to say, hence why I don't see how this is a fact, given that there's no empirical evidence supporting it. I also fail to see why this should only apply to Tyrannosaurus rex. Okay, now this is a very interesting and one of my personal favorite topics to rant about. At 2.30 it goes, female T-Rex were bigger than males. Now, none of the proposed hypotheses in regards to sexual dimorphism for T-Rexes have been proven so far. And uh, at present, the only female T-Rex we positively identified, it's a young specimen with medullary tissue. 
uh, the Schweitzer et al. 2016 describes the specimen. Now, there is no reason to currently suggest that there was even a dimorphism present at all in forms of size or appearance. The most reasonable idea that males could have maybe had a different set of colors from females, but that is also yet to be tested and verified. We don't have that factual evidence to to you know to lean on to pr to verify the validity of this claim, and uh, there has been no evidence also in reversal dimorphism being present in Mesozoic at all. And even if it has perhaps been present, the most we can for now limit it to is a Maniraptor uh, group, which is itself already a very large group covering a lot of animals, and by far, even from modern birds, which are also Maniraptors technically. Uh, there's only a specific small amount of them that fall into this exception. So reverse dimorphism is not a rule, it's, a, it's an exception. So there's no reason to suggest that female T-Rexes were bigger unless there's evidence to, to truly be able to solidify, uh, you know, this claim. Otherwise, this is just a belief that once got out of hand and that turned into a trend through things like walking with dinosaurs and stuff like that. Otherwise, that's complete bollocks and that's just wrong. It's 100% wrong, there is no factual evidence supporting this, and therefore, this is not a fact. The average T-Rex lived about 30 years, so that's the one at 3.02, roughly. This is wrong, uh, and the reason for that is that Sioux, for example, is among the oldest T-Rex specimens of adults documented. However, that specimen is actually a young adult in its uh, growth series. And more on this, of course, you will find out, hopefully, whenever uh, the uh, publication of T-Rex Ontogeny comes out by Dr. Thomas Carr. We have discussed it extensively in our interview sessions, which are included in the links below here. And uh, you just have to understand the fact that this is simply a wrong thing. Just because you have found some of the oldest specimens to be 30 or maybe even 32 years old, if there is one like that. Uh, some people said that Trix was one of them. So even if that's the case, there is no reason to suggest that Trix was the old adult. It's not. It's actually in the range of still being a young animal. And uh, if you probably examine them closer, I'm pretty sure you will see that a lot of the features on the skull indicate it's a younger, spe younger specimen because the details uh, are not as smooth as uh, usually the uh, young adults, sorry, as the older adults, mature adult specimens are. And we have yet to find out what was the real uh, count for the age of that LA uh, specimen, which shows on a skull features of a mature adult as well. For example, also the uh, holotype specimen, uh, the uh, Carnegie one, is an older spectrum of an adult as well. It's not a young adult specimen. It's older than Sioux as well. So, you know, this is uh, this is just one of those things you have to really understand. And uh, basically, to conclude here, that's not a fact. Now, at <laughs> this is one of my other favorites, and I just really love how people just seem to really ignore a lot of aspects of evolutionary development in these kind of matters, and they just try to come up with these weird ideas, which are just absolutely ridiculous. And here is one of them. T-Rex hatchlings may have been covered in feathers. Okay, first of all, um, why don't we see any evidence of that? So I would like to see the evidence for this actually happening. Then, of course, the whole train of thought and just the rhetoric uh, are just one fallacy on top of each other. First of all, you have no, of course, like I already said, there's no evidence to support such a notion. Secondly, how many is many? There's like, obviously, you have to understand that. And uh, third, uh, scales and feathers are far from interchangeable. It's not like it's a big evolutionary step. It's not like, you know, uh, how can just basically anybody in their right mind suggest uh, th this idea of feathered hatchlings all of a sudden swapping their feathers over to scales in a span of a single lifetime? In fact, once again citing Duali 2009, and that demonstrates as well that the growth of feathers from scales, note the order, feathers growing from scales, uh, is possible, but it's only possible to obtain in laboratory conditions, not in a natural process. 
with, especially within a single lifespan of a creature. And, uh, well, believing so just doesn't, you know, make it so. I said that already many times, why is it so hard to really understand? This is the kind of rhetoric that actually pisses me off, because it shows how lazy the research was done, and then presented as facts, and then a bunch of uh, folk out there who just really don't check their facts very well, because they just take it for granted that it's true, and they just start spreading this around, and they start defending this idea, because that may have been the first idea they learned, blah 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 blah, and they have then uh, to confront, you know, their own uh, thing, like, you know, oh yeah, but now I have to unlearn this, now I have to learn this, and not a lot of people do that, now, a lot of people tend to be very rebellious about these things, which is silly, but it's true, so... Uh, that's the problem, and uh, you why like you especially if you have so many subscribers on a channel, you have a large audience. You have the responsibility to present your information correctly, especially if you're labeling it with facts. Otherwise, you've got no excuse. Okay, this is completely wrong. This is not true. You have the paperwork out there. Read it, and then come back and have a talk. Otherwise, this is really pointless. Because uh, no, but seriously though. Why is it so hard to grasp? Facts matter. It's a simple <laughs> thing. Facts do matter a lot. And, uh, well, lastly, anim animals that just give the exa given as examples there, uh, they do not prove the presence of feathers or filaments in Tyrannosaurids. Maybe I should just do a, like another playback record of this whole thing about, you know, uh, how to put it on every time, you know, someone mentions it. You know, once somebody says something about that and I can just replay it so I don't have to repeat myself every single time so my tongue wouldn't hurt so much and my face just wouldn't cringe. Oh, jeez, Louise. Now, uh, to, to give this a conclusion, um, generally speaking, there were some points about the arms to body uh, ratio being stronger and etc. in other theropods. Like, that sort of thing is seems to be close to truth. Like, it's not... Uh, just the same thing as the involvement with Triceratops and the powerful bite uh, and the story behind its naming as well. Those things are correct indeed. They're in general ways, of course, are, are correct and good points. But a lot of other errors are, pre are present in this video and they're just so cringeworthy and unworthy of the education. Uh, you know, this is just not right. You just really... Like, if you wanted just to watch through uh, another, you know clickbait flick uh, with, you know, some drinks and snacks just to kind of pass time, feel free, but I don't expect you're gonna learn anything useful from this video, that's just my honest opinion, and uh, this is where I just really take no prisoners at this point, and I can just say it's an absolute piece of garbage. As an educational material, it does not deserve anything. As uh, just something to pass time, if you have time to waste at all, which you shouldn't be doing, you should be spending it with more useful, learning real things, learning real science about real dinosaurs, then, yeah, I mean, if you want to waste your time on this kind of stuff, go ahead. But I would not recommend that. In any case, end of rant now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and let this channel grow to 1,000 subscribers as uh, I need to get back my... Uh, monetization because YouTube is being silly from 2018 onwards with their monetization policies. Damn it. In any case, thanks very much for watching. I've been AK Rex and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care now.